Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I am Sam Prentice Making It Happen. And please hit that notification bell and the subscribe button so I can reach the dizzying heights of YouTube success. Do it. Do it now. Today we are talking about the Creality cr 10 s 5 and we've already had a fail. <laughs> oh no. Well, maybe we will try printing that again. So your 3D printer was working really well and now it's not. 3D printers are great when you first get them, but if you don't correctly maintain them, they will fail. Perhaps you have found this video and have already reached the stage of regret, and you've been crying yourself to sleep and saying to your friends that you wish you bought a Prusa, explaining to your wife or partner that the £600 taken out of the joint account was still a good idea. Maybe you are in the right place. Big printers equal big fails, and I'm here to help you with how to fix them. So I am going to guide you through the process on how I maintain my printers and why printers fail, how to spot problems, and more importantly, upgrades. Section 1 is all about bed levelling. And in my experience, owning four of these machines, they all have slightly different problems from cable snagging, nozzles blocking, why is that motor clicking? What's that fluff underneath the bed? Why my prints don't stick to the bloody bed? You, my friend, are throwing away good money after bad here, and here's why. Section 1. The Heat Bed and Carriage so I do expect you to have some sort of knowledge around bed leveling. On the left hand side here you'll see a worn bearing and on the right hand side you'll see an eccentric nut. The reason that I'm mentioning these is because if you've been printing with these for a while you're probably going to need to replace the bearings and tighten up the eccentric nuts. You want to put these on slightly loose so you can put them back onto the bed and then tighten up the eccentric nuts with that little spanner if you haven't already thrown this away. Once on the bed you should have minimal amount of movement from left to right and it should flow nicely backwards and forwards. I was really surprised on how warm the bearings were, I've never changed them before but they were seriously seriously bad. So while I was in there I decided to upgrade the belts on the X and Y axes and also the stepper motors and the GT2 Ida pulleys. The reason of course for all of these changes is because the printer just wasn't performing like it used to. And if you're in that same position I suggest you kind of want to look at doing the same. So once you've upgraded your bearings you want to be looking back at the bed again. So a few things you will be familiar with, the lower bed levelling knobs which are a pain to get to. I have these compressed all the way down and will be upgrading these to a silicon shock mount which means there will be little to no adjustment in the bed and the Z-axis gantry. Both sides of these need to be leveled to the bed and to the frame. It's not just the bed that needs to be leveled, it's also the gantry on the X-axis needs to be leveled to the bed but then also to the frame. There is a simple way to do this. I drop both sides of the Z-axis down so that it's level with the special cans of Sam Prentice Fizzy Pop. I manually turn the Z lead screws down to where both left and right of the bar is level. This should now mean that both Z-axis are level to the frame. Next I use the control box to lift up the Z so that I can fit the cans underneath the bar and onto the bed. Slowly lower the Z down so it's level to the cans, it doesn't have to touch. If you move the bed and the cans to the back, the middle and the front and the plate, springs, bed glass and bed are all level, we can move on. If not, I add a link below on tips on how to check if your bed glass is warped and how to use tape to level this up. The standard rule of thumb is to run printer maintenance every two months or 1500 hours. There should also be standard checks before and after each print. Your 3D printer is a tool and needs to have regular maintenance to remain in tip top service. A couple of things to note about the S5 bed. It's notorious for being warped. So if you have to pack the middle and pin the edges of the bed, it won't come as a surprise. Now, depending on your software version and if you're planning to upgrade to a BL touch sensor or auto bed leveling, you will still need to maintain your printer and its bed. Not having to rely on software is key. I have upgraded this CR10 to a 32-bit SKR 1.4 turbo board with Trinamic TMC 2209 drivers. And it has all the add-ons that you could possibly wish for and using the K3D.com's Cheetah 5.0 software, it gave me a very easy route forward and removing that ugly box and printing a new case. I will be using this simple cheetah software throughout these help videos and if you plan to follow a similar route or have questions, comments, problems with your printer, please subscribe and leave your comments below. Help me to help you. These upgrades have enabled me not to be driven mental with that motor noise and I believe it's vastly improved my prints. And I certainly have had no failed prints so far. This video is part one. Part two will be about hot ends and extrusion Bowden versus direct drive and quality of prints. I'm expecting this to be a five part series and I'm very excited with a new 3D printer project 
that I hope to be able to deliver to you soon, which I believe will be a real game changer. Again, and finally, please hit that subscribe button and comment below. Tell me what you're struggling to print and I'll do my best to help. We are getting towards the end of part one now. Part two will be about the hot end and the extrusion. We are also printing a Baby Yoda. I've got filament reviews to coming out as well, so we will catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below. <laughs>